As of 11th November 2020, at least 143 people had died of COVID-19 and over 7,200 others admitted in hospitals in Uganda in about eight months since March 2020. The number of community infections have hit the highest numbers since the first case was registered in Uganda. NTV has learned that 92 people are admitted in the intensive care units, ICU, across the country. The permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Diana Twini, said that about 40 out of 100 patients admitted in the ICU die. At least 70 of the critically ill COVID-19 patients are admitted at Mulago Referral Hospital, while 22 are in regional referral hospitals. It is like the last option. Now, of course, such people, I think 90% die. Because it's like really the end, the end, end, end intervention. But the majority in the ICU, those who are able to breathe and, and they're able to, to, to take in oxygen on, on their own and they are supported and they breathe. They, once, once they go through within like one week and, the, and they are able to pull through and they start weaning off oxygen, those people, they, they get better. They, it is only the people that are, when they reach that, that end, end part of where the lungs completely fail to take in oxygen and they have to, to put in assisted breathing, of course, you know that the, the, the percentage of those that, that die are very, very high. Dr. Twine said that some of these who are critically ill are young people. And we have lost quite a number uh, of, of people who have died. Even just recently, a friend of mine, a lady, a young lady, died. She was 32. She just had two children. So, so it's not possible that we only put that disease to the old or to the very ill, no, it's not possible. COVID-19 is a relatively new disease, so there has been a lot of misinformation and perception about how it spreads and its side effects. We are seeing now COVID as one of the causes of diabetes and hypertension. When you get COVID, it causes actually your blood, uh, your insulin to dysfunction. And therefore you get high blood sugar. What is the ministry doing about phase four of COVID-19 pandemic? At the beginning, Sudil, you remember, we talked. The president talked. We wrote guidelines. Even we locked down at one time so that we, 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 we try to understand, to locate where the pockets of infection so that we are able to, uh, to, to isolate. But we have tried, but unfortunately, Ugandans are spoiled, Ugandans are obstinate, and Ugandans are stubborn. Over time. The health ministry got overwhelmed in managing the pandemic and therefore introduced the home-based care system where patients self-isolate in their homes as doctors remotely monitor them. It has worked well, but in rural areas we have had challenges. When we get people, especially in, depending on their setup in the village, they have had challenges to, to isolate. You find someone is in a hut and is, is with other people and uh, when such a person is found positive you find they don't have where to go. As the permanent secretary, Dr. Twini is the overall accounting office of the Ministry of Health. She says the ministry is operating below budget due to lack of resources from government. The ministry had estimated to spend 2.2 trillion shillings between March 2020 and June 2021 but so far, they have only received 300 billion shillings from the Treasury. The demands are so many. We have to feed all those patients because they can't allow the relatives. So we have to feed all those patients. We have to pay our workers. We have to buy test kits that, that it's like they are like, like water. They, you, you stock in no minute, they are done. A few months after Uganda registered her first COVID-19 
case in March 2020, it was easy for the Ministry of Health workers to trace the contacts of the patients. But now that the country is at phase four of the pandemic, which is the last and worst of its kind, it means that many people in the community are going to be contracting the virus and not even know how and where they got it from. Therefore, the ministry is saying that in order to stay safe, everybody must adhere to the guidelines or the preventive measures that were spelled out by the same ministry. Sudhir Yarhanga, NTV.